Hello and welcome to a video. This time, uh, this question was sent to me by Izzy. It's just on a minimum distance between two particles. Um, I don't know if it's going to come up. I never know what's coming up, do I? What do I know? Uh, but um, I, I think if, I feel like it was more common this kind of question in the old spec than the new spec, but it is still in the book. So, um, and I think this is from the pure maths textbook, interestingly enough. Uh, and obviously, you've had your pure maths exams, but it is possible, I guess, for it to turn up. Now, first thing I'm going to do, I hate INJ notation, so if you don't mind, I'm just going to write it in completely different notation. 3 plus 2t is your x-coordinate, and 4t is your y-coordinate, yeah? What this means, by the way, is that this particle A is starting off at 3, 0. When t is 0, you're at the point 3, 0, yeah? And then it's going, every time t changes, it's going, well, let's say t is 1, you're at 5, Four all of a sudden so this is a three zero and then you're at five four and then if t was two you'd be at seven eight yeah and so every second we move yeah that's at five four we've gone there two across four up because it's a coefficients on t which tell you the direction basically so we're going two across four up every second yeah so this one's going bd 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 like that all the way up there, this is t equals 0, t equals 1, t equals 2, yeah, etc. Now, Rb, similarly, is doing 5 plus 3t and 6 plus 2t. And so it's starting like uh, when t is 0, 5, 6, it's starting up here, but it's going 3 across 2 up each time, yeah. But they won't necessarily collide because... They're, they're objects, yeah, <laughs> like uh, they don't have, it's not like the lines will intersect, the lines, the path showing their, um, you know, the lines showing the path that they take, but it won't necessarily be the case that they're in the same place at the same time, and so we want to find, the, you know, it's quite a weird problem, isn't it, we want to find the point at which they are um, closest, yeah, it's better looked at in some ways, um, if you, yeah, I, I might even just quickly get GeoGebra. Do you mind if I just quickly open up GeoGebra? Because this is going to be really useful for this question, for seeing exactly why you do what you do. Okay, I'm going to introduce a slider. Um, the slider is going to be called T, and it's going to go from 0 up to, say, 10 or something like that. And my points are, I can consider this like a coordinate, can't I? And just say, well, this coordinate is A equals... 3 plus 2t for your x-coordinate, and 4t for your y. Okay, and for the other one, let's call it b, going to equal uh, 5 plus 3t, and 6 plus 2t. Now, if I set a trace on a and set a trace on b, you'll be able to see where it is. We go. So give me a moment, and I'll do the same thing for B. And that's true. That's what Jojo was handy for, yeah? Now, let me just zoom out so you can see the whole thing. Um, hopefully it's recording this as well, my screen recorder. I think it's recording the whole screen. Okay, right. So start there. You're going diddle 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 That looks about here when we're at shortest distance, yeah? But I'm going to show you a much better way of looking at it now, yeah? The best way of looking at it is to find the relative position of B from A, which means we need to find the vector which takes us from here to here. So I'm going to find the vector, the general position of how you get from A to B. Now, I'm going to do that by doing this one minus this one, because A to B is OB minus OA, yeah? I'm going to show you what this looks like on a graph. Our AB is just going to be worked out by doing 5 plus 3T minus 3 plus 2T, and that's going to give you 2 plus T here, and then 6 plus 2T minus 4T, well, that's 6 minus 2T here, yeah? Now, what does this represent? This represents on our graph, um, let me get rid of the traces now one second there we go yeah if i was to now draw a vector between these two points what that actually does as i change t is it works out that vector of how you get from a to b as a vector yeah 
And as you can see, it's just getting bigger and bigger and bigger there. So it's probably around about here where it's at shortest, yeah? Or oh, maybe a bit a little earlier. Look at that. It's around about there maybe when it's at its shortest, yeah? We're trying to make sure that vector's as short as possible. So what are we going to do? Well, we're going to find the length of this vector. We're just going to say the distance between the two objects squared as well, just to avoid square roots because it's easier then, um, is just going to be 2 plus t all squared plus 6 minus 2t all squared, yeah? And so the distance squared equals t squared plus 4t plus 4. I'm just squaring out the brackets there. Ooh. And then 36 minus um, 24t plus 4t squared. Combine it, combine it, you can just see d squared is 5t squared minus 20t plus 40. Yeah. Now, if you want to minimize the distance then this is a calculus problem. You can just do dd squared by dt because the distance will be minimized when the distance squared is minimized. So that's why you don't need the square root. You could do it with the square root though, but who wants to differentiate that in a square root? I'd rather not. You're going to get 10t minus 20. And as we're minimizing, we're finding a minimum. We're going to set that equal to zero. And then you can see it seems to occur when t is two. And when t is two, rab equals uh, four and uh 6 minus 4, which is 2. And so the distance is going to be just the length of that vector. And so it's going to be the square root of 16 plus 4. And so it's going to be root 20, which I hope is the right answer. Now, just have a look at Jojba and see if that makes sense. Let's take it back. t equals 1, t equals 2. Does it look shortest there? It looks pretty short to me. It really does. And it might be useful now to get rid of the traces. Um, I might set the trace to false because you could see it probably a bit clearer then. Let me just set the trace to false on each one. Um, object properties. Where's this trace? No. And then object properties. Don't show the trace. Okay, right. So now you can see, you know, basically what we did was we said, well, we know roughly where A and B are going. But if we subtract the two, then I know the length of this arrow, or I know how to get from A to B at any given point in time. And I want to make sure that approach of how I get from A to B is as short as possible. And so I use calculus to do it. So I'm making sure calculus makes that arrow as small as possible. And I think it occurs there when T is two. Okay, hope that makes sense, Izzy, and anybody else watching. Best of luck. I hope it comes up in the exam as well. Um, my gut feeling is it probably won't, but what do I know? So, uh, yeah, I hope it comes up for you now because you can get it right. All the best. Bye-bye.